what's up guys welcome back to my channel so i just finished watching episode six of house of the dragon now before i get into this video just a quick reminder that my reaction will be under my youtube memberships i've got two levels over there for you guys level one is for 2.99 and you are going to get priority replies from me you're going to get special polls and you're going to get live streams i am just waiting for my memberships to go up so i can start those live streams Level 2 is for $4.99 and you're going to get everything that Level 1 has. Plus, you're going to get all of my reactions to shows like this one, Dragon Ball, Naruto, all the movies that I watch, and all of my uncut Try Not to Laughs. So go over there and check that out. Now, Episode 6 started with them all being a little older. Some years have passed now. Um, I think it was about 10 years that has passed since the last episode, which is crazy to me how they're accelerating their time and ages like that. But it's fine. I'm okay with that. At first, I didn't know who the, the, the girl was that was giving birth, but then when they called her princess, I was like, oh, okay, this is supposed to be Rhaenyra older. So where do I begin with this episode? This is absolutely insane. So the king is still alive. I for sure thought that he was dead the last episode, but I got to say they did a really, really, really good job at making him look sickly and super old in this episode. He looks like he's got one foot in the grave. I'm sorry to say it that way, but he's still coughing and we didn't see too much of any uh, physical issues like we've seen in the past episodes. Um, but he's definitely very frail in this episode. Um, the queen seems to be a little more in her queen role. A little bit bossy, a little more, you know, like trying to get a handle on things. We don't see her trying to... Um, be cool with Rhaenyra it almost seems like she's now kind of undermining her in this episode um we all we see now that they both have sons um 10 years old a little younger uh Rhaenyra just had another baby so she's got three sons um the queen has two sons two sons I think um, we also see that, what is his name? The guy that Rhaenyra, her love interest, that told on himself in the last episode. We see an, a part in this episode where he is training the boys with their sword fighting and everything like that. And he seems to pay more attention to the queen's son's opposed to Rhaenyra's sons and I'm like okay I see he's still really really bitter and upset about what happened because it clearly shows when he's showing more attention to them he doesn't care much for Rhaenyra's sons he even calls her the c-word at one point when he's talking to the queen and he's walking with her through the quarter through the castle or whatever um so I don't know, like we clearly, he still has carried that with him for a very long time. But I caught early on that these kids are possibly not um, uh, Prince Valerian's sons. She has a baby daddy and it's the dude that we see her in the room with. I forgot who he was as a younger version. I think he might have been somebody that I, I, I got to look back. But he's trying to play it cool. And we know that in the last episode, when they got engaged or when they were getting ready to get married, they had this deal basically like, you do you, I'm going to do me, but we're going to run this together. So... At one point, she's, you know, still recovering from giving birth and she's sitting in her room and he comes in drunk 
And she basically tells him, like, look, I have let you F all these dudes. And, you know, I've let you do all this other stuff. But you don't leave when things get thick when it comes to our family and stuff like that. You know, she was like, we made a deal. But that doesn't mean, you know, to not take care of home, basically. So she now commanded him for to be by his side. Now he can't, you know, do all that stuff. <sighs> so now... The guy with the cane, I thought he was just this guy that just worked with everybody else in the castle. He was this frail dude with a cane walking around, but he showed his evil side in this episode. He definitely showed his evil side. We're going to get to that in a minute. But we also see Damien, who obviously is married to the Valerian sister, of what is her name, Elena? And they have children. And she's pregnant. And unfortunately, she had the same kind of a similar situation to happen to her than happened to the queen when she was given birth. And they couldn't, I mean, it, the difference was that the queen gave birth to the baby, but they both passed. In this situation, the baby couldn't even come out of her and neither one of them was going to was going to uh, survive. And so Damien, I, I couldn't tell whether he cared much or whether he was really genuinely concerned. He just always seems to have this hardness about him. So in this situation... I know that she initially told him that she didn't want to stay where they were. She wanted to go back to be with her family. She wanted to raise her daughters there. She wanted to, you know, die by her dragon and, and you know, all these things. And he kind of ignored that and brushed it off. So when she was trying to give birth, there was like the doctor was like, there's nothing I can do. I can't take this baby out. Like I've done everything I could. And then he asked the doctor like is it a chance that she will survive and he was like no so she somehow either heard it or she knew what was going on so she took it upon herself to go outside and she commanded for her dragon to burn her and I was like when I saw that I that was so unexpected to me I was just like I can't believe that she did that but that's how she wanted to go out that's how she wanted to go out. And it was sad to see. And you can tell that it bothered him so... Like, it really did bother him. He didn't break down or anything. But he just didn't seem to know what to do. He saw it happen. And so, later on, we see that his daughters are crying and everything. Um, So, we don't know what's going to happen there. Now, at one point in this episode, I was reminded of Homelander. I was not expecting the queen's son to be caught in the window of his room handling his business, butt naked and all. The, the only thing that came to me was Homelander. I was like, I, here too? Are you kidding me? I don't know. He, it's, it seems like he's a bit disturbed and she didn't seem to be surprised by it either. So that didn't last very long, but she was basically like she wants this is her first their firstborn son. So she wants him to be king and she's, you know, the queen called him or whatever. But they're having this conversation. She's basically saying, like, you need to get dressed, get your stuff together. Like, you know, you can't be carrying on like this. So anyway, towards the end of this episode, we see that the guy with the cane, he's having a conversation with the queen after the king's right-hand man wanted to resign. Now, in this situation, we kind of see that when the guy that was Rhaenyra's love interest was downstairs with the baby daddy, um, they were kind of battling it out. He was giving favoritism to them, and then them two got into it. And they were fighting, and the dude was punching love interest in the face so much that they pulled him off. 
And he basically called them out, like, why are you giving him so much attention? Like, you would only do that to a cousin or a son. And that's when they started fighting. And I was like, oh, shoot. Like, I kind of had some type of idea. But then when he said that, I was like, all right. So you heard them at one point arguing when it came to that guy. And was it Aragon? I think that's his name. And um, the king's right-hand man. They were arguing because obviously he knows. And the king knows too. He noticed it. And, you know, it it was it was a real sticky situation for his right hand man. So I think that's why he went to go resign. But the king wouldn't let him. So the queen was in the room when this all happened. And the queen was like, Well, what's what's the black cloud? Because that's how he described it. He was like, you know, and it just keeps getting worse. And so he basically was like, all right, well, I got to take my son back since, he, since he's the heir of, you know, my throne or whatever, my family, while I still continue to serve you. So she goes back to talk to the guy with the cane, who seems to be some random dude that just kind of helps around. But this dude is quite evil. So they're having a conversation and. I guess she kind of insinuated, she told him what happened and she basically was like, look, like if my dad was here, he wouldn't be afraid to talk to him or to tell him the truth and have my back, basically. I guess she kind of feels like nobody has her back. So he's having dinner with her or whatever. I don't know if she just confided in him over the years and she's just kind of, because he seems to know everything that's going on. In the castle. He seems to know all the gossip and all the stuff that's going on. So you see him going down into this dungeon where he has these prisoners. And he goes to one of them. And he's like, all right, I can set you guys free for a, for a fee. Like you guys got to do me a favor or something like that. And he goes and cuts the tongue of one of them. Then you see he has like this little beetle type of thing on his cane. And I don't know who he's supposed to be. But later on, you see three of these guys with the pins on them. And the king's right-hand man is at his home with his son and, you know, everybody who's at that part of the area or whatever. And I guess he set that castle on fire and basically killed a whole bunch of people in there, including the guy, his son, or whoever else. And so when he went back, he went back to tell the queen and the queen is looking like she's distraught. She's, she's like, what, basically like, what did you do? And he made it seem like this is what you wanted. And she was like, I didn't ask you to do that. And he's like, well, you'll thank me when the time is right. And he picks up, he just looks psycho at this point. I'm like, who is this guy? Like, what? kind of stuff is he running like and what does that little beetle mean i don't know that's just his symbol or his he's part of something because he is not good at all at all and you know we see the king he's i guess i'm assuming that the ring that he's holding in his hand is his last wife's ring and he's crying and he's kissing the ring and he sees a mouse i don't know if that's some type of sign or something um but yeah, like this, this was crazy. So then you see that Rhaenyra, you also see that Rhaenyra, um, the guy, the baby daddy, he leaves. He's got to go. He's leaving. And then her son turns around and asks, am I his son? Is that my father? I was just like, whoa, did he hear the rumor or is he just smart enough to know? Does he feel? feel it you know she's like no you're you're a valerian you know that's all that matters so she's like all right she goes to the prince and she's like you know what we got to get out of here our time's up bring him and i guess that's his little thing or whatever so they go and they want to go back to um dragonstone and then we see the whole family on the bridge and they're looking up and we don't know what's gonna happen after that but Man, this is getting really, really interesting.
this was really interesting, but I enjoyed it. I definitely enjoyed this episode, but <sighs> leave your comments down below. Let me know what you guys thought of this episode, episode six of House of the Dragon. If you enjoyed my review, let me know as well. If you haven't done so, please subscribe to my channel, hit like, share, and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you guys can get notified whenever I pop up on your feed. I'll see you guys later. Toodles!